My name is Nicholas J. Fuentes. Welcome to the 2014 Speech Team Regional Performance. So that right there, that's the oldest clip we could dig up on Nick Fuentes. But what I found more interesting was this clip that I'm about to show you. And from there, I was like, we got to find out more about this guy. Take a look. Never having a girlfriend, never having sex with a woman really makes you more heterosexual. Because honestly, dating women is gay. Having sex with women is gay. Welcome to the club, buddy. Yeah, mainstream media ain't cutting no one no slack. That was crazy. Now, before sitting down to attend one of the most controversial dinners in recent memory alongside Ye and former President Donald Trump, well, alt-right commentator Nicholas J. Fuentes, well, he was born on August 18th, 1998 in LaGrange Park, Illinois. A former student of Lyons Township High School, well, Fuentes, he was active in the student body as a member of the speech team, as well as the institution's model UN. In fact, in May of 2016, 16, well, he was one of four students invited to greet Governor Bruce Rauner during his visit to the school, and he escorted the politician inside of the building. It was also while at Lyons Township that Nick, well, he launched his career as a television pundit with his very own series that aired five or six times during his tenure there. Now, Bill Allen, the supervisor of television services for the school, well, he would remember Fuentes as someone who stood out from the rest of the pack. He told the Chicago Tribune, Nick was a lot more charismatic and articulate than most high school students. Don't worry, we'll get back to Bill. Now, following his graduation in 2016, however, well, something inside Nick shifted as he took to embracing the extreme right like never before. Now, during his speech, he would give that year to an anti-immigrant group, while Fuentes would admit to having become convinced that immigrants, well, they were taking jobs from Americans and dooming the Republican Party to irrelevance. That, despite the fact that Fuentes himself has claimed to be descendant of Mexican immigrants. Now, about a year or so after graduating from Lyons Township, while Fuentes was asked to appear as a guest on another student show, and Bill Allen would admit to seeing a stark change in the young man's demeanor after only a year of being away. He told the Chicago Tribune, I think the biggest change was he went from conservative values to very deep to the right. None of the stuff he produced at LT was even close to that level he's at now. Now Fuentes' splash onto the national scene, well, it began around the 2016 election when he was highlighted in a video of how Boston University students, well, they plan to vote. Now that's where he was recorded wearing a red MAGA hat while proclaiming his support for the election of Donald J. Trump. Now the university would later delete that video, but for Nick, well, there was no looking back. Fuentes began his streaming career as an undergraduate at Boston University, and before long, he was given his very own television series, America First, on the Trump Positive Right Side Broadcasting Media Network. I don't want CNN to go out of business. I don't want CNN to be more honest. I want people that run CNN to be arrested and deported or hanged. Okay. Then Fuentes undertook a series of rants, including the violent attacks and murder of globalists, as well as a CNN employee. Now, this brought a firestorm of controversy down on right side broadcasting, and it prompted an apology from the network. Now, later that same year, while Fuentes, he would attend the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, something that he referred to on Facebook as a tidal wave of white identity. Now, unfortunately for him, well, this tidal wave, it came with a cost, his television show. And and uh, the Right Side Broadcasting Network, they would cancel America first after discovering Fuentes while well, he had attended the rally. Now, seemingly looking for a fresh start while well, Fuentes, he would drop out of college shortly thereafter, giving the Boston Globe this excuse for his reasoning. Massachusetts and Boston in particular are among the most left-wing states and cities. Probably anywhere I would go would be safer than Boston. You know, at some point, you got to come to the realization that uh, it's not you, it's me, right? When everyone's like, bro, chill out and, uh, you know, get the memo. Now, following this development, well, Fuentes, he would take to social media platforms of all sorts to further spread his own version of right-wing gospel, often calling for a white uprising that would see the President Donald Trump installed as a dictator. That's a great plan, Walter. That's ingenious if I understand it correctly. It's a Swiss 
to watch. That's right. Now, most of the time, Will Fuentes, he likes to pull from the playbook of what's known in white supremacy circles as the Great Replacement Theory, or as he likes to call it, the Great Replacement Reality. Now, basically, this idea, it focuses on the belief that white Europeans, well, they're being replaced in their own countries by non-white immigrants from Africa and the Middle East, with the end result being the extinction of the white race. Come on, dude, we're not, we're not dinosaurs. <laughs> the white man's had it good. Let's share it a little, right? Now, despite this, well, Fuentes, he's often rejected the label of being a white nationalist on what's more or less rhetorical grounds, claiming that that kind of terminology is used by the left to defame their opponents. I think that kind of terminology is used almost exclusively by the left to defame. And I think the terminology and the labels that we use, I don't think we can look at them outside of the context of of their connotations in America. Now, Fuentes is also obsessed with women, but not in the way you might be thinking. Now, according to him, well, there's nothing manlier than not having sex with a woman. <laughs> when I said on Elijah Schaefer's show, and they said, have you ever been in a romantic relationship? Have you ever had sex with a girl? And I said, no. If you name searched me on Twitter, as I always do, all these gay people are coming out and saying, I've had more girlfriends than Nick. I've, I've had sex with more girls than Nick. Without further interruption, let's celebrate and suck some dick. His argument basically breaks down to that because he's never slept with a woman. Well, he's never been contaminated by their feminine attributes. More than just that, well, in Fuentes' version of a perfect society, well, women would not have the right to vote. They would wear veils in church and they would be kicked out of the workforce. My God. It looks like a society where women don't have the right to vote. And it looks like a society where m boys and girls get married as teenagers and start having kids and they don't use birth control and they don't use contraceptives. It was, you might accurately assume, well, Fuentes is also totally opposed to gay marriage and trans rights as well. Now, more than just that, well, he wants to chip away at every form of what others would see as, uh, well, social progress, stating in one of his streams, it's not enough to say we're against trannies. You've got to be against women's rights too, or else what are we really trying to achieve here? 1999, we want to go back to 1099. We want to go back to the Middle Ages. Okay, so my 1910 was way off. He's gone. Woo! 1099, what the hell was that? Good luck with that one, buddy. And yet another one of his online streams, Will Fuentes, he would admit to wanting to turn America into a country with a Catholic media, a Catholic Hollywood, and a Catholic occupied government to get out from under the tomb of what he believes is a Jewish led coalition controlling all of these forces. I want Catholics to run this country, not Jews. I want this country to be run by Catholics not Jews. Now, after two or three years of unbashedly spreading his theology all over the internet, well, Nick Fuentes' digital footprint would begin to shrink. Now, first Twitch, they banned his content for hate speech, then Reddit did the same thing a few months later. Now, eventually Fuentes, well, he would lose access to Facebook, Instagram, Apple's podcast, and TikTok, Discord, Clubhouse, Spotify as well. On top of all that, the cherry was consumer services like PayPal, Venmo, Patreon, Airbnb, Amazon Web Services, and more. Perhaps more significantly, well, Fuentes, he was kicked off of YouTube for repeatedly violating the service guidelines against content that encourages hatred of another group of people in 2020. And with his options to express himself dwindling, well, Fuentes, he founded the American First Political Action Conference that very same year, which intended to antagonize another conservative group for not being sufficiently far right enough. The very first conference hosted by this group, it featured ultra-right conservative commentator Michelle Malkin, as well as white nationalist Patrick Casey. Now, over the next two years, well, the conference guest list, it would continue to expand. And during his 2022 event, well, Fuentes invited MAGA supporter, Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene to speak to his gathered audience and for all of them to share their, uh, their crazy ideas. Now, Fuentes would claim to have been introduced to Green by his friend, right-wing propagandist Milo Yiannopoulos, a man who would uh, would come to play a large role in Fuentes' next large-scale controversy. Sorry if I butchered any names there, but that's a tough one. Milo Yiannopoulos. There we go. Two days before American Thanksgiving, Donald Trump was planning on having a private dinner with his old friend Ye, the rapper formerly known as Kanye West. The two had arranged to meet at Trump's Mar-a-Lago club in Florida after weeks of private conversations on the phone, during which time Ye became a cultural outcast for his recent anti-Semitic remarks 
and a whole bunch of other troubling personal appearances. But as it turns out, well, Trump may have been walking into something of a trap because instead of arriving alone, well, Ye showed up with three uninvited guests, one of whom was noted anti-Semite Nick Fuentes. Now, following this dinner with both sides of the political divide, they erupted in anger over Trump's willingness to associate himself with such a disparaging figure. But Trump, he would later claim that he knew nothing about Fuentes or his background, something that Fuentes himself would later confirm during an interview. So Trump is really impressed with Nick Fuentes. And Nick Fuentes, unlike so many of the lawyers and so many people that he was left with on his 2020 campaign, he's actually a loyalist. But there are those in Trump's inner circle who believe that the former president was set up by Ye as part of a headline-grabbing stunt. Now, with Trump's own re-election campaign only about a week old at the time of that meal, and with Ye's own intent of running for president in 2024, well, it's possible that Ye is looking to take Trump out of the race before he even had a chance to really get started. Now, one of the president's political advisors would tell NBC News, the master troll got trolled, Kanye punk Trump. Now, according to reports during their dinner, well, yay, he criticized Trump for not doing more to help pay the legal bills. Of those arrested during the January 6th Capitol riots, something that Nick Fuentes took part in himself. Now, during a conversation with NBC News following the dinner, well, Milo, he would admit to being the architect behind the plan of having Fuentes accompany Ye to dinner with the president in the hopes of making Trump's life, well, miserable. Now, Fuentes himself, he would echo that statement, revealing to NBC News. I hate to say it, but the chickens are coming home to roost. You know, this is the frustration with his base and with his true loyalties. In other words, uh, according to this new breed of alt-right-wing commentators, of which Nick Fuentes is essentially the face, well, even Donald Trump isn't going far enough with his views and his ideologies. Now, prior to 2016, well, the idea that someone like Nick Fuentes would be a, a prominent political voice in America, well, it seemed pretty outlandish. And, uh, well, now it's men like him who are dining with the former president. So, yeah, crazy world. Crazy time we've been through, right? The internet gave us all a voice. And I feel like now they're trying to take it away. Now, where will this chain of events and people like Nick Fuentes ultimately take us? Well, wherever it is, we'll just have to wait and see. After all, this has been Before They're Famous. Thanks for checking out this video. Before we go, I do have a question for you guys. If you were scheduled to have dinner with an old friend and they showed up with a highly controversial figure, would you carry on with your plans or cancel right then and there? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Check out some of our other videos and I'll see you guys in the next one. Boom!